Oh, fantastic. Oh, fabulous. Isn't that brilliant? Thank you so much. But this, I'm so looking forward to this. I've got so much to do. One of the things uh, you do with an old bike that has got a history of repair work on the engine, for example, this one was had a rebore at 60,000. It's running at 86,000, so 20,000 so odd, odd miles. So that's what it says on paper. But one of the things we can do to test this is by using a PSI tester. Server 125 PSI. I think it's okay. So, I think it's done. Let's do one more check. That's good. that up I'm really happy with that finish so now we're going to go to the polishes I'm on 1200 and I can still feel some ridges but as low as 800 1200 1500 2000 3000 um, fast cut and then finesse frame is polished so I took a lot of work.
when I started this, I had not much idea about how far I was going to take this. As you can see, this was the only bit that I allocated to myself. So I'm going to be coming into here. So yeah, huge mess. And we'll have the bike lift here. The workshop is now built. We've got steel top benches here tools that I anticipate I'm going to be needing. My metrics, my Whitworths, my American Fine. We've got drawers full of um, tap and die sets, impacts, milling machine here, the lathe, plasma cutters, arc welders, a big three-phase MIG welder. There's the trusty buffer in the corner there. So I'll move the thing, few things around in here. As I say, when the lights are in, the, all these areas will illuminate it. Here is my organization table. I've got the engine bits here. A line of chassis, bags, electrical bits. If I'm going to buy replacement bits, then I'll actually pop those in the bag. This is the reserve air that comes from the screw compressor. We got rid of most of the deep scratches. This was done on a fairly low speed with a, a kind of a cutting paste and then a polish paste. Let's see how the, the plasma cutter works. You can see there quite a nice fit. Spot weld in the center. One out, second out, out, and, and, and so on and so forth. The weld I've pulled back as much as I can here. Really nice. I put the spark plugs in. I've, I've taken a couple of pictures and sent it to the chroming guy. So here's the latest update on the tank. Unfortunately, it's still not chromed. So uh, fingers crossed he can solve this. So this is a typical brief which you would give to a spray company, just explaining very, very clearly what it is you want so that you're not disappointed. So it's been cut on this plotter, as you can see now. It's amazing. <laughs> see? Let's look under the light and see what the vinegar did to this tank. Well, it seems that the saga has continued. Yeah, I got there this morning and let me show you. There you go, you can see. These little bubbles have appeared. Another one there. Another one here. This is so funny. It's becoming a real habit now. Packing this. Okay, we come. Finally, it has come back. All the graphics gone. Oh well. Um, 
out here just sprayed it. So, believe it or not, that's still yet to be polished. It's not that easy to spray, you know, like yeah. four minutes. It's, uh, yeah, um, it's not. It's not that thing, but for example, rebuilding a, a motorbike as you did it, it took you like a year or some people even more. Yeah. And they want to see a video of 10 minutes of how they've done it. Like. It's often much better to try and restore what you can. Unfortunately, with chroming, rechroming, it's hellish expensive. And uh, so you have to make a call on that for some of the smaller items. I love it. Cleaned up the contact points. So we're just going to figure out where all this goes. And it's done. The beeswax kind of waterproofs the epoxy. I'm going to build that um, corner up with uh, an epoxy because this is the original one, I want to keep it. Cured that up, so I'm going to just profile that back and stick it in and then test it and see if it works. That would be great. Again, another thing saved. Just staggered how quickly and easily the blind comes up. That's going to send me a bundle. Oh, I'm so happy. want to beat it on that till it starts to bend now it's not as hard to do as you'd think yeah that lines right up now you really need an index point and you can only know that if you spoke to correctly and you've hand tightened the nipple so that the, that the rim doesn't move and then you can start your work and you end up with what is going to be for a motorcycle wheel pretty good here we have all the bits you can see it's all ready to go clamp this down 
Uh, so tighten that up. And now we slide that in gently through there. Slowly we're getting there. Wheels are on. Core bits in. Fit on the end here. So this is the first time um, we're trying to fit this homemade mud guard. The wiring diagrams will show you a certain amount, um, so if I get stuck, I'll go there. Let's get the switch in. It's going on display, so it's got to be absolutely clean, all complete. Now we just got to get all the wiring done on the inside. Let's get that in. And then Thank you, Frank, for the Grand Wazoo and uh, keeping me company today as I step ever closer to the end of this build. Okay, the cable is in a bit tighter now. Let's see this cable, make sure this. For the primary chain, 420 milliliters will get it to start. Well, I put in about 450 and let it drip out just to make sure that I knew I definitely had enough oil. The reason we use a grease in a four-speed gearbox is because they haven't built in a seal that goes around the kickstart so if you use a standard oil it'll just run out there's actually quite a simple rather clever system uh, of gearing get this polished so that we can get a, an, an absolutely fluid but it's still sticking uh, maybe someone put it in a clamp or something so you see if I crank it ever so slightly there we go that's what we want Drastic measures here. You can see if that works. Well, that was uh, that was good. And the gasket is there to stop air from squeezing into the head side, and I thought it would take a bit longer to do, but there it is.
It's sealed. Oh, I can smell it. Can you smell it? Wow. Uh. Dip the um, leather straps into normal engine oil. You know, I had a problem with a short wiring system which flattened my battery last night, but all's good. Yeah. That's simple, man. taken the rotor arm off and I think I found something which is not great. Oh, there we go. It's the counterweights. Damn, that's broken. I have welded a, a bit of metal on the end of that to try and save this because I've looked on the Hitchcock's website and they do not have any of these available. It must just fit in. Let's file that chamfer down. is 0 0.8. So we're going to go back on itself so we go clockwise and we're going to simply turn that to 40. Spark should start to spark around about there. Turn your ignition off. Why? Because if you leave it on, you'll get a spark uh, even when you're turning the kick over and sh it'll ignite the fuel in there and you'll get a little kickback. Until you feel a notch, watch this. See? There you go. You can let that go. Turn on the ignition. Make sure your choke is up if it's cold. Bring it back a little bit and Go. That's how a bullet should run. Putting the mounting bolt. Uh, first outing and uh, it was all going fantastically well. That's what's killing the battery. got nothing. You see the difference? I'm 
putting another stator in. It's got different values, uh, best likely higher. I'm gonna swap out these conventional lights with the uh, LEDs. Pilot light, got a nice orange LED light. Then you've got the main light, which is um, pretty bright, I have to say. Zero drain on that battery. That's after a 20 minute ride. It certainly is holding its charge, which is great. Hopefully you can avoid some of what I've had to learn myself. So in that way, that would be really helpful. Um, we're at that stage now where I've got to figure out what this whole project has cost over seven months. I was quite surprised it wasn't too bad. It was how much? Um, it's good to be honest. Um, good for its price. Good for its price, I agree. Yeah, yeah, no, it needed lots of love. Lots and lots of love. Oh, fantastic. Oh, fabulous. Isn't that brilliant? That is superb. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for this, nice old girl. And now the engine is pretty even in its noise across the whole area. It just feels very civilized. I can't put it any other way. I don't never have any experience with one of these engines before. It really is quite civilized the word I'd use. It's just glorious. 